it's higher in performance, um, but not in cost. How much do you actually know about the coolant you're using? Well, today in the MTD Tech Corner, I'm here with David from Ometer to find out some of the problems you could be having and how Ometer can help. So, David, can you introduce yourself, please? Hi, yeah, uh, my name's Dave Woodford. Um, I work for Ometer UK. Um, I've worked for them for nearly 23 years. Ometer is a, a German metalworking fluid, been making um, high performance metalworking fluids for the last 100 years plus now, so. Well, you've just said performance. So how can you prove the quality of your product? Um, it's been difficult over the years. Um, so we, we've sort of stepped back and we've taken another look at how we can talk to people um, in, in, a, in a language that they understand. And we're talking to engineers. Um, we are engineers. We're, we have chemists, chemical engineers. And so we, we've taken it, it right back to a method that both of us can work with. Um, so what we do is we've developed a, a test process, essentially, that can take product from site, take it away so there, there's no impact on any of your processes or, or, or production times. We can do a set of 50 different tests on there, a performance tests, and then we've got a data set that we can work with. Then we come back and we discuss what options we have and, and also what we can do and how far we're going to improve things. So it's, so it's not just a case of we're going to improve, but how much are we going to improve by. So talking about improvement, how can coolant improve tool life and surface finish of a part? Okay, yeah, T tool life is always the one people want to improve on because it, it has the obvious cost benefits. So um, there are many things we can adjust. We can look at the, the, the oil type used in, in the technology. We can look at EP packages. Um, and and the, the test methods that we have um, are really good because what they do is they give us a, um, an advantage percentage. So what you'll want to know is my tool life will increase by how much? And we will generally be able to in increase your tool life anywhere from 25% onwards, really. So increasing tool life and better surface finish mm -hmm. is always what a machinist wants to hear. Yeah, I appreciate it. But how do some coolants make your machine dirty? Because that's always one of the problems you find. Okay, so... We do 50 different tests. Um, one of them looks at the, the emulsifier package as well, because th at the end of the day, if, if your machines are getting dirty, something's splitting out from the product. And so what we do is look at the quality um, and the quantity of that emulsifier package. And, um, and generally we can improve on that and that will make the machine cabinets clean, that will make the components clean um, and, and reduce your consumption as well. Now, I want to talk about a problem and I think every machinist will at one time face it and that is a smelling machine. Smelly machines. So what causes a smelling machine and how do you solve it? Bacteria. Um, bacteria are present everywhere, obviously, but we want them out of the products. Um, and so bacteria, when they're eating your products, essentially produce this sulfurous odor this Monday morning. It's like an egg smell that you get. Um, how we can improve on that? We can look at things like your buffer reserve. Um, we, we, we test for pH. You've probably seen people going around testing pH in, in your coolants, maybe not quite understood why. Bacteria don't like living in an alkaline environment. So what we do is we put buffer reserves in there to, to maintain the products at those pH levels. If you don't um, use a high quality buffer reserve, then you can start to deteriorate and start to see microbiology coming. So, so again, it's something we can delve into the product look at the, the, the quantity and quality of, of those buffer reserves and any other antibacterial ingredients um, and then come up with a better solution for you. Talking about testing, how often should you be testing your coolant? Um, I would say um, every time you top up at the end of the day, uh, every machine tops up at a different rate and so operators um, should really be testing every day. But I would say as a minimum twice a week. Now there's two topics I sort of want to put together in this question because Again, every machinist will have had at least one of these, if not both, and that's rust and foaming. Mm. So what causes it and how can you deal with it? Um, rust at the end of the day is coming from salt that's contained within your water. So if you've got hard water um, and you've got high chloride levels in there, then that's where you're, you, you, you're gonna start seeing your rust. What the product is there to do is to defend um, against that. Um, so again, we can look at the, the types of inhibitors in there and we can look at the volume of them and then we can put them through a test. What you're looking for is the break point. What, what is the, the lowest concentration um, that your product will work with before you start to see rust in this test method? 
Um, so the lower the value, the better it is. And again, it's, it's a data-driven test. We can see um, a value here and we can see a value there, and that's going to give you 30, 40, 50% improvement on your rust characteristic. And then foaming. Foaming is water quality again. Um, so again, soft, hard water. Um, so foam is generated often in soft water. So what can we do? Um, we've got a test method that measures the head of foam, um, and then we look at the what we call the residual foam. And again, we can look at different ingredients to improve on that, and then we, we can um, make that go away pretty much. And you're talking about doing all these tests. So if you guys come on site, what would you actually need to do? Simple, um, and we can collect it. So we need a, a 250 mil sample of the concentrate, and it has to be the concentrate, um, and then a 250 mil sample of your water quality. That then goes back to our R&D in Germany. It takes five to six weeks, but again, as I say, it's all off-site. You continue production. We will do all the testing, bring back the data set for you, and it's a very complex data set, um, and then we'll discuss how we can improve things, and again, by how much as well. This is the critical thing. People want to... Um, to know that they're going to improve but they're going to want to know how much buy it's it's vital to them if they want to move forward so david what are the overall benefits of giving you guys a call um as i mentioned earlier 100 years of producing metalworking fluids um i think what gives us the advantage or is the fact that we're still the manufacturer you can only buy through us we don't throw us, sell through distribution um and we are prepared to go through this testing process um, for free. Um, there's no obligation and it has no impact on your, on your machining while, while we, we carry that testing off site. But surely with everything you guys do, your product must be slightly higher in cost compared to others on the market. Um, it's higher in performance, um, but not in cost. At the end of the day, we do all this work up front because we, we, we're looking for um, a partnership with whoever we're working with. Um, and to do that, we've got to have a product that's got longevity and it's going to work for them for a very long time. So what we really want to do is get it right, get it right first time. And you've heard that many times. David, thank you. How can people get in contact with you? Um, all the usual methods. So uh, phone, LinkedIn, um, emails, um, however you want to contact us, we'd love to hear from you. David, again, thank you very much. If you've enjoyed this video or would like to see more from us at MTD or from David, then drop a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.